Yeah. Good morning, everyone. So, once again, I deem it as a privilege to be with uh, with all of you on the second day of our faculty development program on outcome-based education. Am I audible to all of you? Can you respond? Am I audible? Yes, sir. 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 Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Audible, sir. Yes, yes, audible. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. So, yesterday... Who is the co-host? Who is the co-host? Uh, request all the participants to mute your uh, microphones. So yesterday, uh, you are introduced to the big picture of uh, outcome-based education. Today, we'll be spending most of our time on course outcomes. Let me introduce you to the outline of the contents for today first we'll be talking about uh, course outcomes then uh, we will discuss about course pivo matrix development and then course outcome pivo matrix development these two are two different mat uh, matrices first one is course pivo matrix the second one is course outcome pivo matrix but first we'll be discussing about course outcomes. By the way, uh, let me tell you something. Uh, uh, yesterday, you know, I, I heard from some of you uh, that, you know, you wanted me to teach outcome-based education with respect to degree colleges. That's what yes, I did. So yesterday, actually, I spoke to one of the NBA resource persons whom I know. Uh, then when I was talking to him, you know, he told me that this outcome-based education, see, initially it's actually, it belongs to NBA, National Board of Accreditation. Previously, NAC, it's not having outcome-based education. Their process was entirely different. And the NBA, it gives its accreditation. NBA means National Board of Accreditation. They give their uh, accreditation to engineering colleges, then MBA colleges, pharmacy colleges, then polytechnic colleges. They do not give accreditation to degree colleges, NBA. But uh, NBA, uh, NAC, um, NAC is giving accreditation to degree colleges also. So previously NAC was having this uh, outcome-based education. But recently, NAC also started adopting the outcome-based education of NBA into its process. So that is how for the first time to the degree colleges, you know, across India, they are developing, implementing outcome-based education. So uh, th that's what uh, I heard. I, I have to go through the NAC uh, application also, I didn't go through. But what I came to know is, whatever the things I have told you yesterday, they are there in NAC application, who gives, who give accreditation to degree colleges. Whatever the things I have told you yesterday, vision and mission of the institute, vision and uh, mission of the department. And then um, we spoke about the process for uh, uh, defining vision and mission. Then POs, POs, PSOs, course outcomes, you know, so many things we have discussed. Whatever I have told you, uh, they are there for NAC. Uh, uh, I mean, when it comes to degree colleges. And one more thing is, see, whatever I have told you, they are not particular to engineering colleges. That is something I wanted to demystify today. See, it is the same. Whatever I have told you, they are the same, either for engineering colleges or for uh, polytechnic colleges or for MBA colleges, you know, or for PG courses in M uh, technology. They are the same. It is not particular to only engineering, but maybe somewhere, you know, you might have found the word engineering, you know, apart from that, you can delete that word. 
So, I mean, oh, because since NAC is uh, adopting the outcome based education from NBA, whatever the POs given by NBA, they belong even to degree colleges. I mean, that's what I came to know. But uh, let's see, you know, uh, because first time uh, I'm, uh, I also started working with the degree colleges. We will see how uh, we have to proceed uh, in this particular context, okay? That's what I wanted to info, uh, inform you. Okay, let's come back to today's uh, content. Uh, first, we will be discussing about the course outcomes. You see, uh, what is time? Time, it is already 11.15, 11.16. Uh, possibly maybe 45 minutes to one hour we will be dedicating only for for the discussion of course outcomes i believe um, you know in a sense i believe it, it is going to be an extensive discussion i want each one of you to participate to ask your questions this is the most important thing that a faculty must know right because every faculty must be involved because they're involved in handling a subject, right? In handling a course. So you are supposed to write your course outcomes for uh, writing course outcomes. You must understand the Bloom's taxonomy, use of different words, you know, how to write course outcomes, how to calculate uh, attainment of course outcomes, how to develop a course PO matrix, with, and then how to develop a course outcome PO matrix. So it is not exception to anybody. Um, okay. With this introduction, let us go ahead uh, with the course outcomes. First, I'll be introducing you to Bloom's taxonomy. You see, there are different dimensions of learning. There are different dimensions. One is cognitive. Cognitive is, you know, that's one dimension. Then affective, I mean, affective means, you know, emotions. Emotions there, that's all that's another dimension in learning then psychomotor way of learning then spiritual learning these are the different dimensions of learning what i will do is i will give some pictures with the help of examples i will explain what do they mean um, with their title okay so uh, when you look at this photograph what is it you can uh, identify immediately you see this person, the moment when you look at this person, no, immediately we can conclude that she is thinking something. Here also, you know, these people are discussing, but when you look at this person, you can understand she is also thinking something. Right. So this is thinking. Uh, it is a particular, it is one dimension in learning. This call it as dominantly cognitive dominantly cognitive cognitive means that video cognitive what red mark has cross mark camera yeah can can you please mute her okay dom dominantly yeah dominantly cognitive means you know uh, the bodies are you know almost at rest i mean the movement the there is no movement in the body and i do not mean to say that 100 percent absolute the bodies are uh, at rest there is no movement at all no but majorly dominantly they are thinking their mind is working in these photographs the bodies are almost at rest there is uh, no movement in the body stop but video but their mind, in their mind, you know, they are thinking. So that's why we call it as dominantly cognitive. Now, when you look at these photographs, you know, what do you understand? This is actually a mother and a child. So we understand, you know, what is involved here is love. There is care, there is compassion. I mean, this is actually um sorry involved so this is actually involving the emotions is it is also a particular uh, type of learning so that is how children learn so many things from their parents okay with emotions with love and care you know that we learn so many things like that okay so we call this type of learning as dominantly affective dominantly affective means you no know, emotions are involved it's not the mind 
but we are not saying mind is absolutely zero no there is thinking involved but it is dominantly that's why i'm using the word dominantly again and again okay? now you see here i mean this particular you know uh, type this is also we call this one is dominantly psychomotor psychomotor means the body is moving a lot mind is working but dominantly the body is moving very quickly so this is one type of learning you know a, a, uh, learning where you know the movement of the body is you know dominant when compared to the emotions or when compared to the mind you know we call it as dominantly psychomotor now we, i'm i'm not discussing about a spiritual you know meditation some some people you know they read the scriptures you know some people they simply sit in the nature they meditate they think they ponder they pray you know that is actually another type of another dimension in learning which we call it as spiritual di um, uh, dimension that is now in the photograph that you are looking at you see you see i mean uh, this boy you know this is how may most of us you know when we were students you know at the beginning of the exam you know most of the time we will be thinking the students will be thinking so here it is a cognitive cognitive means the mind is working more but when it comes to towards the end of the examination you now it is not mind it is a psychomotor means they, we keep on writing very fast okay so you know we call it as changing diamond domains so initially it is a cognitive means the mind is involved more and the body is you know is a bit balanced or at rest and towards the end of the examination the you know the mind you know it becomes slow and the movement in the body is more so it is actually changing directions and when you look at this photograph and especially dance performances or tabla performances we see you know when they play the tabla the musical instrument in, in fact the body is moving so there is you no know, psychomotor is there movement so but when the body is moving believe me in music the mind must also work a lot okay so that is you know that is also cognitive is also part of at the same time there is a feeling in singing or in playing music or in doing dance there is a feeling there is an emotion that captures us right that's why this particular type of learning we call it as integrated experiences so these are the different uh, dimensions of learning let's look at it you know let me just uh, cognitive cognitive means where the mind is involved dominantly that is thinking and affects emotions you know where mother uh, relationships come into picture then psychomotor is you uh, know it is uh, something where you know there is movement in the body and a spiritual is you know it is through prayers and the reading of the scriptures and meditation people learn these are the different dimensions of learning okay now coming to cognitive you see cognitive whether bachelor of sciences courses or you know technological courses or mba courses they are more of cognitive mind is involved of course if you talk about you know physical education sir can you unmute yourself sir dandra sir and it got unmute unmute muted now yeah. or uh, yeah it's fine sir it's fine now you heard everybody heard everything right what yeah, yeah everything was everything was fine oh, sir okay. when you spoke fine. about cognitive it stopped yes, okay sir. okay fine thank you sir thank yeah, you well. okay now cognitive processes uh
Yeah. Here now, I'll be introducing you to Bloomstack. So sir, minute. please share your screen, sir. Oh, my goodness. That's what something went wrong. Yeah. yeah sir. Yeah, is it visible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thanks, man. Thanks. Yes, yes. Now you see. Now uh, it is fine, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I am starting it now. Yeah, this is the pyramid of Bloom's taxonomy. Uh, I encourage everybody of you, request you, please pay highest attention here. This is something which everybody should understand. You see, this is Bloom's taxonomy. Uh, we call them as well, actual as cognitive processes. Cognitive means thinking or something that happens in the mind or mental actions. We can, we can also say that mental actions are thinking are things that happen in our mind so these are the different processes that happen you know with respect to our mind okay now the lowest level is remember the lowest level is remember on top of it understand on top of it apply and on top of it analyze evaluate and then create Creating is the highest cognitive process, right? Creating is the highest cognitive process. Now, in the remaining of our session, what we are going to do is, we discuss about each and every cognitive process. Teacher, a teacher should know, because teaching involves, or training the students should involve each of these cognitive processes and where to involve these cognitive processes and how to involve these cognitive processes into our teaching. So that's what we are supposed to understand. Right, now let me see, uh, okay, let me introduce you to the next slide where I will speak. Let's talk about a cognitive process, remember. See, remembering involves retrieving relevant knowledge from long-term memory. So, it is where we memorize things. We memorize, okay. We memorize. Understanding is not necessary. You see, we simply buy hard things. So we buy hard things and they are stored in our long-term memory. And whenever, you know, we are asked, some, when some people ask us, you know, we retrieve that uh, in content from the long-term memory. That is actually, remember, it has nothing to do with understanding. There are so many things we buy heart without understanding. For example, this is actually see in intermediate, you know, when I was studying, we have by heart lot so many mathematical formulae. But I really, I didn't understand many of them, but I remember so many of them. Not because I understood, you know. So this is a way of learning, uh, but it causes lots of damage. Memory, memorizing things are, is very important. Memorizing, memorizing things is very important, but without understanding, remembering something, you know, by hearting things that does so much damage to education. This is one thing I realized very late in my life. Okay. Okay, this is remembering. See, and what are the action verbs? So uh, that are, what are the action verbs that can be used with this cognitive process? You see, recognize, recall, list, mention, state, draw, label, define, name, describe, prove a theorem. See, these are all the action verbs that are actually, they work with the cognitive process, remember. Let me explain you. See, for example, recognize is there, right? Many times, you know, we ask people, do you recognize this person? When people ask us, do you recognize this person? Then we start thinking, you know, and we say, yeah, I remember this person. Or we say, oh no, I'm so sorry, I couldn't remember you. 
what is it actually we are trying to do we are trying to retrieve information from the from the memory yeah i mean specifically from the long term memory that's what we are trying to do so in our question papers you know we can write uh, uh, we can give a pictorial diagram and we can say recognize the parts in this picture that is a kind of question i mean it belongs to uh, i mean remember the category such questions sometimes we say in you know, a list list out all the components of a television if there is a question in the question paper so what is the what i mean student is expected to remember all the parts of the uh, television and they have to write okay you know there is a picture tube this is screen you know there is a plug you know that's called list out the parts you know sometimes you know we use the verb mention or you when know, we say state state newton's first law state newton's second law we ask questions like this right so these questions they belong to the category remember okay draw a picture you know draw the picture of a heart okay or draw the picture of you know some some so and so construction you know that's also students they have to remember and they need to draw the picture so here is a define many times we ask so many questions you know but in define define uh, boiler's theorem or uh, define um, uh, heisenberg's uncertainty principle you know what is what the student is supposed to do the student has to retrieve the information from the long term memory and they are supposed to write so it has nothing to do with understanding you see it has nothing to do with understanding it has nothing to do with apply analyze evaluate or create all the student needs to do is they have to by heart they have to store everything in the memory and when it is asked they need to retrieve things from the memory they need to write so this is what we do most of the time in our question papers then so, there is the name you know name the parts of you know a cell you know then student will write you know there is a nuclei and they will say there is mitochondria you know i mean that's the kind of uh, things they say describe describe you know we use this particular action verb also most of the time in our question paper but remember some question papers they are full of only these action verbs what does it mean if a question paper is filled with only this this list of this particular list of action verbs its meaning is the student need not understand anything all they need to do is they have to simply remember simply they have to buy heart that's enough they they can score lots of marks and bloom as per bloom's taxonomy it is the lower order process it is the least it is in the bottom you see it is a process of lower order you understand so this is what actually the outcome based education wants to avoid don't fill your education system with questions like this define describe okay but here is a particular uh, last action verb you see prove a theorem actually uh, th that's why i put a question there prove a theorem how can it be here actually proving a theorem it is a higher order process cognitive process it requires lots of skill i mean uh, speaking to the fact to prove something it is a higher order process but most of the theorems that we give in our in our exam student is not actually proving them there whatever the proof the faculty gives in the classroom student by heart said and he just you know retrieves it and writes it in the exam that is why we kept it under the category remember uh, frankly speaking proving a theorem it's a higher order cognitive it is actually it comes in evaluation you know just to be know the creation higher order to process but the reason why we have kept this process under the remember category because most of the theorems we teach in the class students whether they understand them or not it doesn't matter they simply by heart when you give the same theorem in the examination the students will simply come and write it so what they are doing is they are not really proving a theorem but they are simply bringing out from the memory whatever they have had you know and they are pasting it there that's what that's why this word is here. right 
So this is uh, remember. Now the second cognitive process is understand, right? We are set to understand when we are able to construct meaning from instructional messages. What do we mean when we say we understand something? That's what, what do we mean when we say we understand something? You see, if we are able to construct meaning from instructional messages, then we can say we understand things. We understood, you see. Uh, I mean, here the keyword is instructional messages. What do we mean by instructional messages? You see, instructional messages are received during lectures, that is in the classroom, when the faculty teaches, or in demonstrations, what happens in the laboratory, or in the field trips. Sometimes we take our students to field trips for survey purpose, or during performances, or during simulations. There are so many simulation softwares are there. So are in books or on computer science, more computer monitors. So instructional messages can be received in different forms. It can be through classroom teaching, or it can be through performing or demonstrating an experiment in the laboratory, or it can be during a field trip, or it can be with the help of uh, watching a movie with animation on a computer monitor. That these are different ways in which we receive instructional messages. Now the question is, do you understand those instructional messages? What do we mean when we say do you understand? Are you able to construct meaning from those instructional messages? You see, you look at the last point. Instructional messages can be verbal, pictorial, graphic, or symbolic. So these are the instructions. They sometimes they can be simply in, in the form of words. That's what is happening. That's what happens in the classroom. Then pictorial, that's what animation, okay? Then graphic, you know, or sometimes a symbolic where we give things in the form of allegory, you know? So instructional messages can be in different forms. But let me tell you once again, we, our, we give instructional messages to our students in various forms, in the form of uh, classroom lectures, in the form of demonstrating experiments in the laboratories, in the field trips, in the surveys, in the mini projects. There are different ways in which we give instructional messages to our students. Now the question is, our students, are they able to meaningfully construct statements? Are they able to construct meaning from the instructional messages? That's what I understand. Right. Now the action verbs coming to understanding interpret so the interpret is a particular category that comes as part of understanding so interpret means translate paraphrase represent and clarify see for example if i give a statement in hindi and if I ask the student to translate that statement which is in hindi into english when can they do it when they can understand the statement in hindi with proper meaning, with the right meaning, that then they can translate. That's what is actually interpret, translating, paraphrasing. What do you mean by paraphrase? You give some 10 paragraphs or five paragraphs, and you ask the student to write everything into two paragraphs. That's what paraphrasing, and are representing, are clarifying. So that's the interpret is a particular category, which is part of understanding, okay? Exemplify. I mean, exemplifying, illustrating with the help of, you know, sometimes when students do not understand our lectures, what do we do? We use examples. We give illustrations. Why do we give examples? To clarify things, to make the things uh, understandable for the students. Then classify, categorizing or subsume, okay? Classifying things, categories, okay? arranging things in the form of categories. Then summarize. Summarizing, you know, that's what, you know, especially when you write research articles, you know, you write abstract, right? What is abstract? You, know, you summarize 10 pages article into a paragraph. That's called a summary. That's what we do when, when we watch a movie, three hour movie, and when we tell the story of the movie to our friends, you know, what do we do? We summarize the movie and we give the movie in a paragraph, we explain it. Just in three or four minutes, we explain it. 
that is called summarizing then inferring inferring means you inferring you infer a pattern or a meaning okay comparing see comparing is a verb which is very peculiar you see this verb compare it is part of the cognitive process understand as well as it is a part of the higher order cognitive process evaluates this compare can be done at two levels one type of comparison is a surface level comparison just you look at the outward features and you can compare for example you know you uh, let two persons stand you know uh, side by side and if you ask a child to recognize you know i mean immediately they recognize because the features are very obvious right but actually if you ask a student you know to compare their skills in programming or to compare their skills in a particular work that requires lots of effort you need to conduct a test you need to have certain criteria to judge so that is a comparison that happens at a very deep level but you know at the surface level you know it is very easy when you look at the outward features you can compare two colors and you can say you can tell which is red and which is yellow which is white and which is black because the moment when you look at it it is very clear so this kind of comparison comes as part of understanding right now explain oh this is a particular verb which we use most of the time in our question papers so explaining things you can explain something only when you can understand okay so i mean this is what is understanding so remember is a lower order cognitive process on top of remember there is a understanding understanding is a bit it is also a lower order cognitive process but it is i know on the top level when compared to the remember category okay and one more thing let me tell you whenever you speak about you know a higher order cognitive process it actually includes in itself all the uh, lower order cognitive processes that are below it for example when you speak about understand it includes the remember category also whenever you speak about apply which is on the top of understanding this apply category it involves the understanding and remember category in itself and whenever you speak about analysis analysis it includes in itself the apply category understand category and remember category and whenever you speak about evaluate this evaluate category it includes in itself the analysis category the apply category the understand category and the remember category they are all part of analyze then only you can analyze something right but the same is not the case with the lower order process for example if i say remember category it is only remembering it doesn't include understanding or it doesn't include apply or analyze or evaluate or create similarly whenever i say understand understand includes uh, uh, it doesn't include the apply category because apply is on top of understand understand it cannot it doesn't include in uh, the analysis category or the evaluate category or the create category so this is something you need to understand now let us move to the third cognitive process apply what do we mean by apply using procedures to perform exercises or solve problems so this is called apply apply means you know the procedure you know the methodology you know the principle now you can apply this procedure on the data that is given to you for example when we go to a doctor for a checking our bl blood sugar levels we give our blood so our blood sample is the data now what the what does it do i mean they have a procedure and they apply that procedure on to the blood sample that we give them then they will come up with certain values that is called applying so apply it actually speaks about procedural knowledge methodological knowledge or you know, some principles some laws you know and you know how to apply them on to the data that is given to you okay so apply cognitive process it is closely linked with the procedural knowledge 
let's look at the action verbs. Action verbs for apply are execute or implement, determine, calculate, compute, estimate, solve, draw a conclusion, relate things, modify things. So you can, these are all the action verbs which are part of apply cognitive process. When you say calculate, how do you calculate? If I give you some mathematical equations and if I calculate you, if I ask you to find the value of x and y, then you know the procedure. You apply the procedure for the linear mathematical equations and you can calculate the value of x and y. So, and if I ask you to determine what is the sugar level in a blood sample, then you know how you have a procedure, a doctor or a nurse, you know, they have a procedure and they apply that procedure to the blood sample. So that's what compute is also same as calculate or estimating. You do estimations, you know, because you have got procedures. Okay. So this is actually the category apply. Then look at the category analyze. Analyze is in a higher order, okay? Higher order cognitive process. What is analyze? Involves breaking the material into its constituent parts and determine how those parts are to one another and to uh, an overall structure. That is what is analysis. Analysis means if I give you a particular, uh, let's say a TV, if I give you a television, and if I ask you to analyze the television, its meaning is you have to, I mean, disassemble the television, which means you need to identify the different parts of the television. You should be able to open it and you should be able to separate the audio for uh, audio components and you should be able to separate the screen and then you should be able to separate the picture tube and you should be able to separate the components for USB drive and for HDMI cable, you see. So analyze means you break the whole structure into its constituent parts. And you, look, you are able to look at each and every individual part. And then you can relate each part with one another, how part A is related to part B. In the, in the context of a television, how the audio devices are related to the picture tube, how the picture tube is related to the screen, how the USB drive is related to the uh, picture tube. That is what is analyzing. Mean, it is just like, you know, look, take our body. You know, our body has got different parts. It has got eyes, it has got nose, hands, legs. So many parts are there. You know, what do these MBBS people do? They study each and every part. And when all these parts, they also study how these parts are related to one another. That is what is the analysis. The best example is, you know, there is a game called Jigsaw, right? Most of you play Jigsaw. So what do we do in Jigsaw? No? You, you give, you know, uh, this, this big picture. Let's imagine it like a big picture, which is, you know, cut into piece or um, 10 pieces. And you, uh, I mean, you arrange these pieces in a very particular, you know, you disorderly put them and you give to somebody and you ask them to arrange them. So, I mean, they know, they take each piece of that picture and I, I, they know, they try to relate these pieces with one another. That is how, they come up with the whole big picture. You understand? That is what is analysis. So what are the action verbs that belong to this analyze? Okay. Differentiate. Differentiating means differentiate is an action verb that belongs to this particular cognitive process analysis. So differentiate between a mango and a guava fruit or differentiate between Newton's first law and Newton's second law or differentiate between two components, you know, differentiate between a granite and a marble, you can say. So, I mean, you differentiate, you try to identify the differences, that is actually differentiating. Then organize. I told you just now the example of Jigsaw. That's what you do in Jigsaw game, you know, you organize uh, different pieces into a big, in one uh, whole picture and they, you, are, you put them into one big structure. like. Okay, right, organize. Then attribute. This attributing is also part of analysis, okay? You deconstruct and you determine a point of view 
you know, especially in arguments, you know, right? When two people argue, you want to understand what is the perspective of each person. Then what you need to do, you need to, you know, uh, dis I mean, uh, disassemble or, you know, deconstruct their arguments so that you'll be able to understand what are the attributes of their uh, argument. Okay. So let me tell you some of the activities which are part of uh, anal analysis, okay? Clarifying issues or conclusions or beliefs, you know, these things are related to analysis activities. Similarly, recognizing contradictions between theories or between beliefs or between principles, you know, that is actually part of analysis. You, you recognize the contradictions. Then you develop a criteria for evaluation. So evaluation to judge something, you need some criteria, right? So developing that criteria is also part of analysis, analyzing. Then clarifying arguments or interpretations, beliefs or theories, you know, these are the activities that are generally part of analysis. So in, in the question paper, whenever you give the question analysis, you should think, I mean, really can we give to the, because an analysis is a huge thing, which cannot be done sometimes in three hours. It cannot be done in one hour. It cannot be done in a half an hour. So, I mean, that's what, you know, uh, I mean, most of the academicians, they suggest not to use this uh, uh, action verb analyze or analysis in the three hour examinations. You know, better to give uh, action verbs like this, you know, for assignment purpose. So the student can take the assignment to home. They can spend the whole night or they spend a few days on the problem. They can analyze it and they can come up with a report to you. Hope you are, I hope you understood what I'm trying to say. Analysis is a very big thing. We cannot expect the students to do analysis. I mean, in its true sense, we cannot expect the students to do this analysis in a three hour exam. Because in the three hour exam, student is expected to write so many things. It's not simply analysis, right? So, so in a three hour examination, it is highly difficult for a student to do the analysis process. But most of the analysis that we give in our examinations, they are not truly analysis, but actually they are part of that remember category or understand category. Because whatever we teach in the classroom, the same thing we give in the question paper. So student, when they come to the exam, you know, immediately quickly they write it. Their minds are not at all involved in writing an answer because boy, they memorized it. So, that, so uh, though we use the name analysis many times in our question papers, that analysis is not truly analysis in its true sense. Because analysis in its true sense, it requires lots of time. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Right. Then look at uh, analysis in engineering. I should have uh, put it as analysis in uh, technological field. It is engineering or technology or sciences, wherever it is, you know, you see. It is not easy to design any questions in this category in limited time written examinations. That's the point what I was trying to explain you. Analyze activities can be included in assignments related to case studies or projects or term papers or field studies, you know, where, you know, there is no, I mean, uh, too much restriction the time limits, you know. There we can construct questions or assignments you know, with regard to this particular category. Okay, now let us move to the category evaluate, cognitive process evaluate. I hope you are, you remember the pyramid, right? At the bottom level, there is the remember category. And on top of remember category, there is the understanding category. On top of uh, understanding, there is the apply. On top of uh, apply, there is actual analysis. That's called analyze. And on top of analyze, there is evaluate. Okay, so let's look at evaluate. I keep on repeating this, uh, this pyramid because, you know, you should uh, digest these things, uh, you know, uh, into yourself, you know, and you should be able to tell them even if, you are, if somebody wakes up in the, from the sleep, okay? Okay, evaluate. Evaluate is 
make judgments based on criteria and standards see it is judging something that is called evaluate so if i ask you if you go to let us say uh, if you go to if you want to buy a washing machine let us say you want to purchase a washing machine so what you do when you go to the shop you compare you keep two washing machines and you compare these washing machines with so many things with so many criteria you may look at the color of it you may compare the color or you may compare the size and you may compare the prices and you may compare the volume of the clothes they can take and you may compare the functionality these are all the criteria by using which you compare to items and you come up with a judgment and finally you say yes for one washing machine and no for another washing machine and uh, i don't know have you whether you have participated in some intellectual debates i i have this habit of participating in intellectual debates i encourage you watch you in youtube you know, there are so many debates you know regarding time and eternity you know there are so many debates are there in these debates you see the people who debate they always take some criteria and against these the criteria they argue the statements or belief systems they come they come up with the most plausible belief or most plausible hypothesis so the point is evaluate is judging something to judge something you must have certain standards okay criteria used uh, i mean the criteria you, that you use for judging it includes quality sometimes or sometimes you compare the effectiveness or sometimes you may compare the consistency though i have not written here sometimes you may compare the security you know when you purchase a mobile phone what do you do when you go to a shop there are certain mobile phones that get heated up very quickly and there are certain mobile phones that though you use them for one hour they won't get heated up so you i mean that's what you know why they are getting heated up you want to go for the mobile phone with all it generates no heat at all similarly there are certain mobile phones with the best megapixel cam cameras you go for that and there are certain mobile phones which provide high security you know there are certain mobile phones which are very good for music you understand there are certain mobile phones which are very good for gaming so these are all the different criteria you consider to compare two products and you come up with a judgment that's called actually evaluation i hope now you understand okay so the standards may be either quality to our quantity okay now let's look at the action verbs for evaluate test it detect monitor coordinate are critic you have to judge see you judge for what you can judge for accuracy you can judge for adequacy you can judge for appropriateness you can judge for clarity you can judge for cohesiveness completeness consistency correctness credibility organization reliability significance standard usefulness validity values work criteria standards are procedures. these are all the different parameters that you can use to judge something right this is actually evaluate and then create the last cognitive process is create so create means you create something it is actually producing a product create means it is creating something uniquely it is actually producing a product so you see create it involves putting the elements together to form a coherent or functional whole what does it mean you assemble multiple components together and you produce a product the product you know as a functional whole it is a single product but many components okay so while it includes uh coming to create you see while it includes objectives that call for unique production also refers to object calling for production that students can do or will do what does this point says you see it says usually whenever we say we create something it must be unique 
but when it comes to btech students they call their project work is a time bounded one maybe 3 months time period or 6 months time period or one year time period so the product may not be unique but still it can be duplicate of something but still they created it again from the scratch i hope you understood creating something from the scratch it may not be very unique but they created it from the scratch that's why we call it as create so what are the action verbs that are to create you generate you generate a theorem you generate a formula you generate a system you generate a model or you you give an explanation which nobody else has given you give a generalization you generate a hypothesis or you generate a prediction okay or you formulate a principle you know these are actually generate generating means you putting forth things okay then planning planning thing but designing you can you have to design a uh, you can create a design a design for home or a design for a vehicle or a design for a college management system or a design for an examination system as actually designing or planning or you designing a plan for developing a product okay then produce producing is actually creation so generally uh, this is what okay okay let me just give you a summary of uh, all the cognitive processes that we have discussed you see from in our today's session so far there are two things we have discussed one is we have seen at different dimensions of learning i said there is a cognitive uh, cognitive way of learning then uh, i said affective learning then uh, after affect what is it psychomotor learning then spiritual learning okay so the i mean things pertaining to bachelor of sciences or bachelor of arts you know or technology or management you know most of these things they we have to do I mean, they have to do with the cognitive thinking cognitive processes but the courses like in you know, physical education you know they you know they are you know related to psychomotor learning right and then we have seen bloom's taxonomy bloom's taxonomy is all about cognitive processes cognitive processes means processes that are related to the mind or processes that we make use of the mind processes that make use of our mental abilities that is what we mean when we say cognitive processes now in cognitive processes there, there are different levels the bottom most level is remember category on top of remember category understand you see the remember category and understand category these two are called as a lower order cognitive processes you should note down this point the remember category and and the understand category these two are called as lower order cognitive processes why they are called as lower order cognitive processes because in in the remember category or in the understand category the student there is no need for the student to demonstrate anything or to perform anything or to create anything or to evaluate anything i mean visibly they do not do anything all they need to do is they need to remember everything is in the mind or everything is internal when we say when i ask you the question did you understand what i said so far how do you respond you say yes sir i understood that's all because understanding happens within your mind i cannot measure it there is no way of measuring it similarly if i ask you define define newton's first law you can say it because it is there in your long term memory you see so remember category and understand a category these two categories they are part of lower or cognitive process okay on top of stand there is a apply and on top of apply there is uh, uh, analysis and on top of analysis there is evaluate and on top of evaluate there is create which is the highest order cognitive process now let me again come back in the remember category you always use your mind your memory matters 
and in the understand category are you able to meaningfully understand the instructional messages the instructional messages can be verbal can be pictorial or, or can be animating animations in whatever it is are you able to construct meaning from what you see or hear that is understand then it comes to apply it requires procedural knowledge you have got a procedure and you have got data can you apply this procedure upon that data and can you tell me some value that is called apply then when it comes to analysis analysis means you break the whole into its constituent parts so you understand how each part is related to the other part you understand the properties of each part you know what what happens if you do something to part a you know how part b will be affected so that is analysis then evaluate 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 is all about judging so how do you judge based on a criteria you have got certain criteria by using this criteria you judge belief systems you judge hypotheses you judge principles you judge products you compare and you judge right on top of evaluate there is creative creative so this creative means you create a product you i mean you can create a design you can create a picture you can create a program you can create a system you see this is the highest order right and whenever i say create it involves everything else that is below it so the creative cognitive process it contains within itself evaluation analysis apply understand and remember categories and whenever i we speak about evaluate the evaluate cognitive process it includes within itself all the other cognitive processes which are below to it which means i mean anal it, it includes analysis apply understand and remember and whenever we speak about analysis cognitive process it includes in itself apply understand and remember and whenever we talk about i cognitive process it includes in itself understand category and remember category and whenever we talk about understand category it involves in itself remember category and when we talk about remember remember doesn't involve anything on top of it i hope uh, at least you got a picture now the outcome based education says outcome based education says use the cognitive processes remember and understand as less as much less as possible use this cognitive processes you know as much less as possible it is not possible to completely eliminate them because they are implicit but directly don't frame your question papers or don't frame your course outcomes or don't frame your program outcomes everything is about understand and remember category because they have nothing for the student to demonstrate visibly the student cannot do anything so that is why but we cannot eliminate understand category and remember category completely still we can find certain questions but very less number of questions in our question papers uh, yeah they can be you know an understand type or uh, there can be remember type remember cognitive process but they must be very few but most of the questions must be related to uh, apply category and analyze category evaluate category creative category creation category but in a time bounded examination we should have the sense of using you know uh, which cognitive process i told you already analysis evaluate and create they are no actually we have to use them in mini projects or in assignments you know where students takes one week or two weeks time and uh, one week or two weeks time to do their assignments right so i mean so that's what in outcome based education use the cognitive processes understand and remember as much less as possible 
and most of the time you have to use from higher order cognitive processes higher order cognitive processes include apply category analyze category evaluate category the creative category so here what i want to do is uh, uh, i want to take a break break in the sense let's go for question and answer session after that i will introduce you to course outcomes once i clear only for 5 minutes we can have a question and answer session after that i will take you to a uh, question uh, course outcomes which is the most important thing right sir yes, now it is time for uh, sir, question there, answer five minutes sir, okay there is only one question sir i haven't found any questions in the chat box so yeah. the question is like this sir uh, the cognitive levels which you are talking about uh, to describe a question should they reflect what we plan in the course or we can uh, plan the course uh, uh, and then we can uh, select any cognitive level for uh, 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 writing the question paper if the question can be a bit more precise you know that would be great uh, uh, the question goes like this sir if the cognitive levels which you have spoken now all the uh, levels like remember understand apply analysis evaluate and create these are the cognitive levels which are to be uh, selected to write a question paper yeah from the course content and what should be the level of the course content okay now is yes. very good very good i mean especially you see there are certain courses called as professional courses okay. for example if you take a bachelor of science Sir. let us say you might be having a bachelor of science in i mean bachelor's in computer science you have right madam in yes. computer yes. Yeah. yes sir so if you look at computer science program uh, at bachelor's degree yes, it it involves even english mm. it involves even mathematics mm. at the same time it involves courses program i mean courses that are specific to computer science so just a minute madam so now when it comes to courses that are very specific to computer science mm -hmm. definitely you have to go for a higher order higher order cognitive process okay. so the question paper should be focused more on apply or analyze or evaluate or create because they are professional courses mm -hmm. that contribute a lot to professional i mean uh, professional career of the student mm -hmm. but courses like english or physics or chemistry they contribute less for the professional career of computer science graduates so their question papers you know can be you know more of an understand category and remember category sir so, sorry yeah. sir sorry to interrupt sir the yeah. the question is uh, uh, the level of cognitive level of codes is also important or it is not important to uh, design a question paper yeah that's what see when you take a course a course contains contents at a different cognitive levels sir if you take a, any course any course contains questions like define yeah any course contains uh, questions like you know do you understand understanding no so every course covers all the different cognitive levels sir okay but when it comes to a program as i said al already for okay. computer science if you take they will be having some course let like 10 subjects let's say okay. so when you take 10 courses there are certain courses which are specific to their professional career okay so come I in computer science professional i mean they go to the industry they work or they go and take up a research work you know okay so Though those courses contain even uh, content from the lower level categories, um. the faculty must concentrate on a higher order cognitive process. Okay. Concentration should always be on the higher order cognitive process. But whenever I say concentration, focus must be on a higher order cognitive processes. I never um. mean that we have to neglect the lower level cognitive process. the question paper contains definitely few questions irrespective of the subject 
few questions that cover lower le lower level or lower order cognitive process but more questions from higher order cognitive process but for subjects like english or mathematics or you know uh, chemistry you know question paper sir. will contain most of the questions from lower order lower order, order. yes sir yes sir because they contribute less to the professional career of the student okay okay sir there is one more question sir yeah. uh, which cognitive levels mostly used in question papers either low or higher okay i mean the same thing whatever i had said just now which was in it covers yes yes it covers na yes. I, i told you yes i told you see outcome based education should focus more on higher order cognitive processes yes higher order cognitive processes means apply category analyze category evaluate category and create category mm. but we cannot completely avoid lower order cognitive process that's why the question paper will contain some 10% questions or 15% or 20% mm. can be you know on lower order cognitive process but 80% should be on higher order cognitive process yes sir. yes sir but i told you already when it comes to subjects like english physics yes. chemistry yes yes you know 80% will be lower order cognitive process 80% yes whereas 20% will be higher order higher. because yes. it is not possible to design yes. higher order questions in english yes. subjects that's true that's true sir uh, one more question sir for theory papers create evaluate analyze and apply very rarely can be used uh, then what should we do madam padmavati i yes, don't know yes yes yeah theory means you see i mean this is one thing for example you see software engineering there is a subject i think um, bachelor of computer science also bachelor so they, they also might be having this subject yes sir it yes, is sir. it is a theory subject sir. but everything is higher order in it you uh -huh. see Uh, purely theory subject software engineering which we have for btech graduates but include it includes everything you know applying a different models of software engineering or designing software systems or evaluation testing you know so i mean simply because the subject is theory we cannot put it in the lower order cognitive process it is not so okay. in computer science that's say in computer science itself there is a branch called theoretical computer science okay theoretical computer science is fully theory but everything is a higher order cognitive process hmm. okay that that is something faculty should understand just because a subject is theory it doesn't mean that you know everything is a lower order in it no that's not right so okay. that's why case by case we need to understand what what is the theoretical subject you talk about hmm. for example environmental science Mm, mm. so let us say if, if you talk about environmental science truly it is a theoretical subject yes. and we cannot give any practical questions in the question paper so yes. most of the questions will be lower order questions for mm. uh, environmental uh, sciences yes sir yes sir so it clearly depends upon what paper we are what subject we are dealing and uh, yes 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 okay what is the course you are handling that yes. that that's what uh, differentiates where we have to concentrate sir one more question is there sir most yes, of sir. our exams either theory or practicals the duration of the examination is only 3 hours yes. is it suggestible to give higher cognitive orders which require more time yes it is a very good question i told you already you know that's why you know a faculty should discern it when they setting up a question paper is a it is not at all a simple thing faculty should plan a lot i mean how to set the question paper how much portion they should go to the remember category how much portion percentage they should give to understand category how much percentage they should allocate to apply category how much percentage they should give to analyze category they have to plan but you know absolutely the create category we cannot give an examination that is one thing very to create because that is a creation of product but when it comes to evaluation and analysis though we say it is a high difficult to cover in the 3 hour examinations if you can define a this i mean design a question i mean which you know about which you are confident that a student can do the design in a short period of time definitely you can cover it not an issue 
but you generally speaking analysis and evaluation they take lots of time so you cannot give big questions you understand so and that is how you need to maintain that balance the faculty has tried this way okay sir sir one more question sir yes, how can we use create cognitive process for degree students i mean i think we, they are having mini projects and projects right madam sir they have you, project it, it was there in your slide also sir maybe she have, she might have missed the oh, there's project work project yes. work yes yes our yes. mini project work yes our assignment you can give you can ask the students to design something create something assignments sir, sir. yeah sir shall we continue with the yes yes thanks thanks everybody i am moving with, into the most important part now uh, now let's come to uh, and the course outcomes see outcome based education it asks us that most of the time we have to focus on apply analyze evaluate and create but it doesn't say that we need to neglect either remember or understand you know they are part of these things you know understanding and remember now let's look at course outcomes uh, we see this principle of uh, saint joseph okay fine so if you see hello you, you can hear me right yes sir now now it's audible yeah. sir go ahead go very ahead. good very good thank very you. good thank you thank you so now you see this is the english course look at the way how i have used the verbs there cognitive process they said develop they said identify improve and appreciate so this is no uh, i mean fitting to uh outcome based education is and then applied physics okay look at the course outcomes you know course outcome one experience and understand basic physical fundamentals and the key vocabulary to describe them kinematics dynamics work and energy rotations gravitation heat and thermodynamics and fluids okay then course outcome two develop skills in observation interpretation reasoning synthesis generalizing predicting and questioning as a way to learn new knowledge then course outcome 3 develop scientific problem solving skills including organization of given information identification application of principles quantitative solutions interpreting results and evaluating the validity of results course outcome 4 develop interpersonal and communication skills including communicating in small groups writing working effectively with the peers course outcome 5 apply conceptual understanding of the physics to general real world situations so this is a I mean, physics related faculty can see you you should have the curriculum with you and you should have all the bloom's taxonomy uh cognitive processes and the related action verbs with you then you refer to the course outcomes written by uh, some other people or institutes by verifying all these things you have to write your course outcomes in this style i am telling you once again in india for the first time outcome based education is being implemented to degree colleges so i mean you it is a laborious for process for you people i am saying laborious i'm not saying it's really tough no with the guidance you'll be able to do it okay now those who are handling chemistry look at the course outcomes you see make predictions about atomic structure and chemical properties of the elements based in their position in the specific periodic table course outcome to use the standardized names and symbols to represent elements isotopes ions compounds and chemical understand the principles of kinematics and you know, thermodynamics as applied right. to the rates right 
this is you know about chemistry and uh, those who are handling you know at, at you know uh, number theory i mean especially mathematics those who are handling mathematics you see you know apply the foundational principles of number theory including the factors logicals divisibility gds and lcm in a variety of situations course outcome to develop a deeper understanding of the real number system then so and so then course outcome three develop a deep understanding of the basic mathematical operations how the operations are related to each other how the operations are related to the different number sets how the operations can be represented and modeled and how and why various algorithms work course outcome four develops number sense by effectively estimating mentally computing in creative ways just find solutions and so on and so forth course outcome five develop an understanding of what proportional reasoning is and recognize when and how to use proportional reasoning uh, to solve problems you see what i have done is actually i did not write any of them i just visited internet because yesterday some of you uh, i mean asked you no know, to talk about courses related to uh, your college you know I, that's why i have taken english physics chemistry mathematics you know from internet i have taken but uh, see I, i will give you at the end of my session the guidelines but this is what i have taken from other universities you can verify how they are using the action verbs see here they have got in you know, apply category and they have got to develop 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 everything is done okay now financial accounting yesterday somebody spoke about you know commerce you know this is something related to them you see course outcome develop a working vocabulary of accounting terminology course outcome to gain an understanding and ability to work with accounting uh, uh generalizing posting adjusting and closing entries procedures financial statements internal controls and corporate accounting course outcome three gain an ability to analyze transactions apply them to the accounting uh, cycle prepare a trial balance and compile financial oh, statements Lata. course outcome four develop an understanding of and exposure to ethical issues responsibilities of accounts course outcome 5 provide the foundations of advanced work in accounting and business related subjects this is how they have written for financial accounting so i mean i just gave you some subjects you know just to make you feel you know how actually course outcomes are and how they made use of the bloom's taxonomy cognitive processes while writing their course outcomes if you see in all the courses the first the first word is actually a cognitive process the first word it is we call it as a verb so the first word itself a cognitive process that is how you need to start but at the beginning of uh, all this course outcomes you know there will be a common statement like you know the student will be able to a student will be able to make predictions about the atomic structure then see what is a student will be able to use standard names then co3 a student will be able to identify patterns in bonding then course outcome 4 a student will be able to explain then outcome 5 a student will be able to understand so this is a common phrase for all the course outcomes a student will be able to or the student will be able to that is how you need to see the student will be able to apply the foundational principles otherwise uh, the student will be able to develop a deeper understanding of the real number system otherwise the student will be able to develop a deep understanding of basic, basic mathematical operation you see a student will be able to a common statement you know at the end of uh, uh, at, or as a prefix to every course outcomes okay that you need to now i will take you uh, into really what are the precautions that one should take care while writing course outcomes okay first always remember the right structure three parts in a course or a course outcome must contain three parts remember at least i am not saying it as a rule but most of the course outcomes should con they contain three parts one is verb plus functions and input data for example somebody can write a course outcome like apply set theory i mean 
I say, I mean, uh, it is not a meaningful course out there. When you say apply set theory, on what I should apply? I should write on what I should apply set theory. That's why you should write apply set theory on a given set of data. See, apply is verb, then set theory, you know, is actually the functions, you know, it is a collection of functions. Where do you apply on a given set of data? That is the input. So every course outcome should contain these three things. Structure may vary, but at least you know, as a general rule, you keep in mind that there must be a, there must be a verb and there must be a group of functions and there must be an input data. Okay, another thing. So this uh, apply is one part and set theory is another part and a given set of data is the input. Verb, functions and input. So every course outcome, should contain these three parts most of the time. Even the course outcomes, which I have read just before, you later, you know, you go through them, identify these three parts in, all, in each of those course outcomes, okay? Then, avoid using the word various. Like, listen, let's look at an example. Apply various functions of set theory on a given set of data. So, this is the course outcome. A student will be able to, that is the prefix, a student will be able to apply various functions of set theory on a given set of data. See, there you see the word various, right? You should never write like this. The reason is when you say various, there can be any number of functions on a set theory. Your curriculum may be covering only few functions. There is no curriculum which can cover everything that belongs to any field. If you take physics, you know, it's a, in the, so many things are there. You cannot cover everything in a single curriculum, right? So your curriculum may be covering only few functionality that, that are applicable to the set theory. So, so a statement like this, you know, we say it's an open-ended statement. You have to close it, you see? That's why the right way of writing is apply functions of set theory on a given set of data, including union, intersection, and complement. So now functions are limited here, you see. The functions of set theory have limited them to union, intersection, or complement, including. Or the same thing can be written in another way. Apply functions of set theory on a given set of data, including, but not limited to, you notice that, but not limited to union, intersection, and complement. So this is the right way of writing. You should not write, apply various functions of set there on a given set. Various means it is unlimited number of functions are there. You cannot bring all of them into your curriculum. They, no curriculum can support that. Understand? So be careful while using the word various. Another most important thing is, you see, a course outcome is not a question. For example, let's look at this. Apply set union operation on a given set of natural numbers. It is actually not a course outcome. It is a question that you can give this one directly in your question paper. So students will take a set as an example and they will apply union operations on two sets. So that it is not actually a course outcome, but it is a question. I mean, this is where most of the time faculty does mistake. A course outcome is not a question. A course outcome should cover, it's a broad, broadly it should cover certain things. Things can happen in that course outcome, you see? Okay, and another one is avoid using multiple verbs when you write course outcomes. You see, for example, and let's look at this course outcome. A student will be able to understand, apply, and analyze that theory operations on a given set of data. There are multiple verbs that are used to understand, apply, analyze. I told you it is enough to write analyze because analyze is the highest cognitive process here uh, among the three that are mentioned here. So when you say analyze set theory, uh, see, analyze set theory operations on a given set of data, that analyzed, it, it implicitly contains within itself understand and apply. There is no need of writing again, understand, apply, and analyze. So don't use you know, so many verbs when you write course outcomes. Please stick to one course outcome. But, but, but you know, I'm saying to you, it is not a hard and fast rule, but 99% you should use a single verb. 
So there are cases in the people say design and develop. Okay, some flexibility is there. Design and develop new solutions. Okay, that's fine. Uh, compare and contrast. Okay, there are certain things, you know, two verbs go hand in hand. In such cases, it is permitted. But most of the time, make sure that you use only one action verb. Nobody will question you. If you write multiple verbs, you know, when the listing thing comes now, I mean, I don't know whether everybody will ask you, but there are people, you know, uh, who are good enough, you know, to understand things and they will definitely question you. Okay. Now, so I have told you three things, four things, I think, you know, uh, let's look at them. What did I know the right structure? There must be a verb. There must be functions. There must be input. Don't try to open-ended statements. Keep your statements always closed. And always start with a verb. Remember, you have to start with a verb. Then don't use the word various. Because the unlim you, can, you cannot have a curriculum which can accommodate no infinite number of operations. So you understand, right? Always use either including or including but not limited to instead of using various. If you think there are certain things, use these keywords, including or including but not limited to. Another thing is course outcome is not a question. Remember, okay. Then don't use multiple verbs. Always use a single verb. Of course, there are places where we give, there is flexible time in compare and contrast, design and develop, you know, develop and test. There are certain places where we have to relax, but most of the time, make sure you use only a single verb. Now let us look at some exercises. Uh, I mean, to give you the familiarity with that, you know, okay. Uh, then we will move into the next session with some question and answers. Please carefully look at these exercises. They are very enlightening. They help you to understand. Okay. Example one. This is a course outcome. Student should be able to have a basic knowledge of active and passive circuits. This is a course outcome written by somebody. Student should be able to have a basic knowledge of active and passive circuits. What is the problem with this? The problem is, I told you already, always start with a verb. So better you rewrite your course outcome as determine the characteristics of a given active circuit. That is enough. So start with a verb. Instead of writing, see, student will be able to, that is something, it is a prefix to all the course outcomes. Student will be able to. Then determine the characteristics of a given active circuit. That is so. Always start with a verb. Okay, example two. Students will execute mini projects. This is a course outcome written by somebody. Students will execute mini projects. What is the problem with that? You see, instructional activities are designed to facilitate the attainment of CVOs by learners, but they are not course outcomes. See, mini projects, assignments, they are no, you give them two days, three days, six months time, three months time. These are called as instructional activities. There is no course which contains, you know, that students must do a mini project. There is no such course. Okay, so students will execute a, a mini projects, our student will do a major project, our student will understand a workshop, our student will gain knowledge by attending FDPs, or, you know, skill development programs. Such course outcomes we should not write. They are all you know instructional activities. Instructional activities means you know students will learn later either through assignments or mini projects or going to a company or working with a group. You know that's the thing. Now the question is, you see, what if if mini project is a course in B Tech? Actually, I think there was uh, some regulations where you know mini project was introduced as a course. If mini project is introduced as a course then you should treat mini project as a course and you should write course outcomes. That is a different issue. You understand? Sometimes there are regulations where mini projects were used as courses. In such a case, you need to write separate course outcomes for mini projects. Okay. Now, another example. Apply the concepts of moment of inertia to calculate moment of inertia of a ring disc and road. This is a course outcome written by somebody. Look at the question. 
apply the concepts of moment of inertia why to calculate moment of inertia of a ring disc and rod don't you see lots of redundancy this is implicit content you see the right way is calculate moment of inertia of a ring disc rod that is enough see when somebody is calculating moment of inertia isn't it implicit that they apply the concepts of moment of inertia now it is just like you know if i ask some of you if somebody is preparing a uh, cook biryani cook biryani means you no know, it is implicit that you know the process of making biryani so you should not write uh, apply the concepts of making biryani to prepare biryani uh, using chicken can i write like that no if you are preparing biryani it is implicit that you know the process the procedure for making biryani that's what apply the concepts of moment of inertia to calculate moment of inertia is redundant concepts of moment of inertia are implicit when they are able to calculate moment of inertia right now let's look at this one familiarize with various sorting and searching techniques and solve real world problems using the apt technique see familiarize with the various sorting and searching techniques and solve real world problems using the apt technique there are multiple problems with this course the first thing is implicit content see if you are applying sorting and searching techniques it is very implicit that you are familiar with those techniques so the right way of writing is solve sorting and searching problems for a given set of data i hope you are able to understand what i'm saying or you can also can write apply the right sorting and searching technique on a given set of data you also can write like this okay another example see design the cutting tool angles this is a course outcome written by somebody design the cutting tool angles nobody will design a angle right nobody can design somebody can design a tool cutting tool but they cannot design the angles in the cutting tools right angles they are natural abstract concepts so use of improper the right way is determine the cutting tool angles you can find out the angle whether it is 30 degrees or 40 degrees or 90 degrees or 180 degrees you can determine what is the angle within a cutting tool but you cannot design the angle right that is improper usage of verb one more example have the concepts of first law and uh, newton's first law and second law what's wrong with this you know this is an course outcome have the concepts of newton's first law and second law what is the problem you see i have written there sevos are competencies or behaviors that can be demonstrated not descriptions of internal changes in the student that happens in the student's mind it is just like you know have the concepts of newton's first law and second law means students can understand newton's first law and second law that's what it means but when somebody understands it the understanding happens in the mind you cannot measure it for you to measure the student the student has to perform something outcome based education says that it is an outcome as said i told you outcome is something which we will be able to measure so when the changes that happens internal within the mind of the student we cannot measure we have to measure only what the student can perform so the right way of writing is demonstrate newton's first law and second law so when you ask them to demonstrate newton's first law and second law, they can at least give some examples and they can demonstrate you understand you should not try to have the concepts of newton's first law and second law no one more example, please see this is a very good example use various grammatical uh, grammatical constructs like nouns pronouns verbs active voice passive voice conjugation pattern for effective team communication this is a course outcome written by somebody even in one of the course outcomes i have showed you they have written like that from some university i have taken but we strongly discourage writing like this what is the problem with this course outcome first thing is various is used is use various grammatical constructs like various you should never use it because it keeps the course outcome open you need to close it you need to be very precise when you define a course outcome 
so various so should be avoided okay and then it is too general actually what you have written when it says various grammatical constructs like nouns pronouns verbs active voice passive voice conjugation pattern it almost includes the entire cu uh, curriculum for that subject it is too general so better not to have that and one other and another thing assessment is very difficult for course outcomes like this you understand so they are the things and uh, i mean uh, that's my second part is completed but third part is still pending uh, if you can give me 15 minutes time i can complete that part also but before i proceed to the next part you know where practically we implement uh, if there are any questions questions and answers please uh, talk to me are there any questions and yes, answers yes yes sir can we start right uh, can we start writing co, CO right. like uh, to acquire knowledge about acquire knowledge about i mean actually to acquiring knowledge is i mean is there any way of measuring it okay so whenever we go for writing course uh, outcomes it should be accessible right? yeah that is what that is the spirit of outcome based education madam okay but the thing is that saying that you know again i say yeah there are certain areas where we cannot avoid so mm. that's why we allow people, especially English people, or mm. physics, or you know, or you know, we allow them to write such course outcomes, acquire knowledge, mm. though they are not actually suggestible. Because acquiring means you know the student is consuming the content, but outcome based is education is not about consuming. What are you performing outside? I should ah. be able to see it and perform it. Okay. Yeah. Sir, uh, one more question. I'll go for. Yes, ma'am. Sir, uh, is the uh, is there uh, an accepted ratio of taxonomy levels to be addressed for a question paper or course? Accepted ratio of taxonomy levels for a accepted for a question paper, madam. Yes, sir. Or course. Uh, I mean, what do they mean exactly when they say that? And, uh, uh, sir, the question is written like this, sir. Sir, is there an accepted ratio of taxonomy levels to be addressed for a question paper or the course? Maybe uh, difficulty levels they are uh, planning okay, about. Okay, accepted. Very good. Very good. Uh, now I, I got their point, madam. Yes, I told you already in the first session itself, you know, we are supposed to use higher order thinking. In higher order, there are many action words. Just a minute, I will show you one slide, madam. Just a minute. Sir. I think there is, I have this. Just a minute. Uh, Okay. Okay. Uh, in my PPT, yeah, I am sharing my PPT again. Can you see this Bloom's taxonomy? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, uh, everybody, please look at this Bloom's taxonomy. Mm. So, when, when you say remember, mm. on the right hand side, you, see, you can see define, <laughs> duplicate, <laughs> just memorize, repeat. These are the action verbs, okay, yes. that pertain to remember caddy. So you can design question, you can use these action verbs while designing questions that belong to this category, remember. Similarly, okay. understand, there are action verbs that classify, describe, discuss, explain, identify. You can use these action verbs to design questions that belong to things that belong to this category, understand. Similarly, for apply, execute, implement, solve, use, demonstrate, interpret, operate actually i will give you i will provide a sheet Sir. which lists out all the action verbs which come as part of the cog uh, respective uh, cognitive processes uh, there you know uh, you can design questions by using those action verbs right yeah. sir one more question is there, sir yeah. how about the course regarding life science subjects like biotechnology for biotechnology yes uh, we can write fantastically 
because biotechnology is an area where lots of uh, research work is going lots of uh, i mean we can use all the cognitive levels madam in biotechnology okay so yeah. it's a, yeah. it's a, yeah sir what i understood from your discussion till now is if it is a, a professional course we can use all the cognitive levels if yes. it is a basic science we can be uh, going maximum up to apply right sir yes madam that's exactly sir. exactly that's why in the beginning itself i told there are certain courses which are specially related to the professional career sir sir we call them as professional courses sir so all the professional courses they must give a special focus from apply it sir. and the other courses like language or you know arts courses like you know english or physics you know most of these things you know yeah no issue we can limit them to understand category because they are not professional even but, apply i think apply also oh, because some mathematical uh, involvement yes, yes. so up, up to apply level i think we can go for we, we can use we can use yes. we can use yes yes sir. for example yes. physics for example yes. physics is, can be a professional course for those who are working in physics field physics may not be a professional course for computer science graduates or for electronics graduates yes, but it is a professional course for the people you know whose future is in physics yes. so in which case we can use all the cognitive levels still create for physics students sir uh, a last question sir yeah. uh, we are having six semesters for three years course and the average of five subjects in uh, uh, every semester so should we go for 30 course outcomes not 30 course outcomes madam sir the, uh, yeah you have six semesters yes sir and each semester is having some five subjects yes sir six into five 30 sub courses you have yes, and sir. each course will be having some three to four course outcomes so every three course we need to go for writing course outcomes depending upon uh, the curriculum that is there for that yes it is mandatory every for every course you must write a course outcome otherwise why is that course required to be there if there is yes. no contribution yes 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 sir yes sir every course in, from starting from english sir. every course must have a course curriculum so uh, a what, curriculum and course what, outcomes whatever paper is designed be it a fundamental paper be it a uh, 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 main core paper whatever it is whatever paper is designed in particular curriculum we are supposed to write the course outcomes for every paper that is yes there. yes ma'am okay sir. yeah so that uh, course outcomes may be limited depending upon the uh, syllabus like it may be 3 4 or 5 something 5 like 6 or 7 yeah it changes yeah. it depends yes. on the course yes sir. yes, sir. yes. Yeah. so we will go for the next session. yeah we will go i mean uh, i am sorry it is already 1 o'clock i mean do you want me to continue for 15 minutes or do you want me tomorrow i don't have any issue sir we'll continue says to the participants i think they are very much enjoying they are asking questions and they are giving the feedback in the chat box that, okay uh, yeah uh, the i have received uh, yes sir yes sir types of uh, oh, fine 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 Th that's what you know if not today if I, if you are already bored or you know, feeling heavy then i can go tomorrow sir. otherwise you know Uh, i can finish up today oh, we'll we'll end the session to today and then because it's 1 o'clock maybe lunch Fine. time lunch Fine. time Fine. so we we'll, but it is not like bored or anything else sir we are enjoying Fine. we haven't noticed that it is already 1 o'clock <laughs> you are explaining to nice guys yeah. yeah. so thank you buddy tomorrow we will continue yes yeah, sir so oh, thank oh, you for the day sir thank you for the uh, beautiful thanks. session and Thank the you, most sir. important uh, most beautiful part of this is there is a touch of humor also in this so where people are really enjoying uh, your examples and your presentation sir so and for the coming to the candidates tomorrow also the program starts at 11 o'clock sharp and at the end of the session you will be given a, a link where you need to write a small exam uh, which will be designed by tomorrow uh, end of the session and later we will be issuing the certificates so thank you uh, let's meet tomorrow Yes. Thank thanks. You. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, sir. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.